This is always so funny. What's that? This is, it's always like so funny coming up here. <laughs> how's, your, how's your first day in, uh, in the gesture? It's cool. I mean, it's, 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 it's a cool experience. You know, just, it's, uh, you know, just like practicing, you know, I felt like a, like a, a relief, you know, like I know I'm, I'm able to make it here, you know, coming from like where I'm coming from. And, uh, you know, it's just a great um, opportunity right now. So it's pretty cool. I know you go pretty hard in practice. Usually, was it hard for you not to go full full speed today? No, I mean, yeah, we wasn't going full speed. I mean, you know, I just only can do what I can do. But um, tomorrow, you know, it's supposed to be more intense. So I'm hoping to do a lot more tomorrow. Uh, I know you said you had you you didn't sleep much uh, after you got drafted. Have you been able to sleep a little bit uh, now that you know you've been a weekend? Yeah, I'm cool. I've been getting right amount of sleep. You know, I usually try to get to bed before ten. Um, you know, um, eating the right foods, uh, waking up, uh, doing uh, doing doing what I got to do, and uh, to keep my body healthy. What do, we, what do you think about some of your new teammates? They cool. They real goofy people. You know, funny. Uh, <laughs> they all welcoming. You know, we all talk in the locker room. Um, every everybody's like welcoming me. You know, in, in the locker room. So like, we all like a like a big family already. You go to bed before ten. That's pretty early for. Your age, you I try to. Practice. I'm gonna try to. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a old, so you know, I gotta get my sleep so okay. I can perform right. <laughs> right. An old 24. Yeah. I know you're not gonna jump over cars anymore, but how much did you weigh when you did that? Because that kind of says something about your athleticism. I was like, I was like 240 around that time, and then when I jumped over the the blue SUV, I was also around like. 240 something but yeah I was around like that range um but yeah firstly you know like I said I didn't retire from doing that <laughs> how did you choose uh jersey number 99 uh it was my first number when I got to college actually and then I switched over to nine and so you know I'm just hoping to keep you know the reputation going here are you familiar with Mark Gaston at all no, I have heard about him before but I don't, I don't really know too much about him what did you think when you saw uh, DJ Reed's video after you were drafted? Yeah, where he was celebrating that That <laughs> was real cool. You know, it was uh, it was real funny. He had goofy dude. Um, you know, great uh, welcoming video. You know, I was honored that uh, he was he was able to do that. Um, you know, him and the, uh, the other players. You know, it was, it was just real funny. You know, real uh, hyped up about the defense this year. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. What are some of the things you need to add to your repertoire as an NFL pass rusher, things you might need to improve or add to what you do? Um, I want to improve a little bit um, everywhere, you know, not just in, like, one aspect, you know, my game. Uh, rather, it is pass rush. Um, or rather, if I'm, like, dropping and, you know, just, like, can things. I kind of just want to get 1% better in, like, every area. Because, obviously, NFL tackles – week in, week out are better than college tackles. So what could you get away with against college tackles you might not be able to get away with on this level? Uh, I think it just uh, depends on, like, on like how, you know, I approach it. Um, I could probably get away with, like, a lot of speed, um, probably add a little bit of power into it. But, um, no, I just think, like, just the way how I approach it, um, I, I, I can be able to treat it the same way. You're known for a spin move, right? Is, yeah. Was, that was pretty successful for you. Did you pattern that after anyone? I mean, Dwight Freeney's kind of known as the guy who uh, revolutionized the spin move. Yeah, um, I actually learned it from Max Crosby. You know, um, I started watching his film, his film like my my uh, sophomore to junior year in college, and uh, you know, just like replicated uh, him, uh, Von Miller, um, <coughs> Aaron Donald. You know, and interior dudes. Like, just learning from, like, a lot of people, you know. Um, that's how I, I came up with uh, some of my moves. And then just, like, adding, like, my own juice to it. Uh, as far as also kind of, like, stripping the ball, did you kind of learn that by watching those guys, too, or just something that coaches kind of taught you? Um, I think it's just, like, awareness. You know, just um, – I, I feel like uh, something that really helps me with that is probably, like, my martial arts. Um, I do this that I'll be doing um, with, like, hand-eye coordination. And like balance, um, and then you know, like just uh, objective, you know, like you want to get the ball out. If you get the ball out, that's money. I don't know if you heard that the quarterback for the Dolphins, Tua, is 
doing a lot of jujitsu this off season to help him with falling. Uh, can you, do you, did you study some of that and, and how does it help you deal with falling? Because that's what he's working on. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it since like, uh, since middle school. So um, it definitely helps a lot, you know, like balance, um, keeping you up on your feet. Definitely helps me out um, a lot, you know, my band, you know, coming around the corner, uh, making sure that if I am slipping, I'm able to keep, you know, myself up, you know, in my hand or just like hurry up and catch my balance again. So it's definitely going to help him out um, in the long run. Who's the best offensive tackle you faced in college? Um, I would say at, at, at the Reese's Bowl, um, his name was uh, Tyler Stane from uh, Alabama. He was a really good tackle. Him and um, Anton Harris from uh, Oklahoma, also very uh, good tackles that I faced. Very good. Thank you very much. Cool. Appreciate y'all. What's this like? You know, trying to, to learn the playbook and just kind of get acclimated with. It? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a great experience. I mean, just being able to finally dive in fully into a playbook, it's something that, you know, over these past I guess three months that I've just wanted to finally find myself in an offense and it's just a great feeling to finally be in one. You talked about uh, Jason being like a mentor. What has he done for you? What has he meant? to you uh, during this journey? Yeah, I mean, he's done so much for me, just kind of, you know, I guess being a mentor, but, uh, you know, giving me advice, being able to, I guess, answer questions that I have, and um, and then from a standpoint of just playing football, he's helped develop me as a player, as a person, and, you know, I, I guess I don't thank him enough for that. What has he told you about being, you know, once you were coming to the Jets, mm-hmm. what did he tell you about that? I, he pretty much just told me to put my head down at work. Um, and that's, I guess, just the basis of it, pretty much. What are your thoughts on just Keith Carter and uh, him as an offensive line coach? I mean, I'm just excited to get to work with him. You know, I uh, feel like, you know, we've been able to establish a relationship, and I just uh, I'm excited to actually actually grow that relationship and, I guess, keep mo- moving forward through the whole, uh, you know, I guess, uh, process of uh, uh, playbooks and whatnot. Have you gotten a chance to speak to Aaron? I have not, no. What is it about Wisconsin and offensive line prospects? There's so many all around the league. Why does Wisconsin produce so many really good offensive linemen? Yeah, I think, you know, just being at Wisconsin, there's just a tradition of kind of excellence. Um, you know, you, it's, and it's nothing that's really ever stated, but you, you walk into the O-line room and you can just feel it, you know, uh, kind of just like a, a group of tough, nasty individuals that are all working toward, towards the same goal, and I think that's just kind of a, a tradition that they've been able to establish, and uh, yeah. I do, I do, yeah, I, I'll take that. <laughs> Is there pressure to hold yeah, I think I'm gonna have to keep it longer than I thought I was. <laughs> you know. What was the journey like to center? Obviously, there aren't a lot of six six centers. There are some, but not that many. How did you end up there? Were you a little resistant at first because of your height to go to center? I would I wouldn't say I was ever resistant. You know, I'm just looking for opportunities to get on the field, and you know that that kind of transition. There was a lot of stuff that I had to keep in mind. You know, being a bigger center, you know, I can't be given as much surface area just because I'm a bigger dude. So there's just a lot of stuff that plays into it. Playing lower, and but it was a good transition, and it's something that I'm happy I did. Why why did it? happened like what was the path to that at Wisconsin uh so coach Chris and coach Rudolph kind of just sat me down going into my third year at Wisconsin and they said you know the center spots uh, available and they wanted me to go in and take the spot Joe have you spoken to Nick Mangles at all I saw he <laughs> picked he left some barbecue sauce in the yeah uh not, not much pretty much just uh just the barbecue which I'm excited to get to try <laughs> What's your background at guard in case you have to be a, a swing guy? Yeah, so at Wisconsin, you know, my first two years I spent mostly playing tackle guard. I, I played, I think, 11 snaps in, in game at the guard spot. But, uh, and then after that, you know, uh, just kind of through the whole draft process, been practicing a lot of guard, getting a lot of reps at it, and, um, you know, wherever there's opportunity. What is the key to keeping your pad level low? I, for me, it's just like kind of those little, uh, I guess, like for individual plays, it's just those little reminders to myself that I, I kind of use to kind of just remember what, what I need to do to keep that pad level down. And there's just little little keys that I remember. What was, what was it like the night you got drafted? I mean, not only 
did you get drafted? You're coming here. Your coach Kate was here. What was that night like? And you were with him that night too. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a surreal experience. I mean, just uh, as soon as uh, getting that phone call, seeing that it was that New Jersey number, you know, my heart sank. You know, I knew what was happening because. Um, you know, it was Jets pick was up, and I immediately first thing I thought of is I can't wait to tell Jason. And but I mean, it was a whole whole ex- amazing experience. And Jason took off right, right pretty much as soon as I got drafted to run back to his house and grab a bunch of jet gear for me to be able to throw on uh, throw on. So you know, it was just an awesome experience. Have you had a chance to talk to Jim Leonard, who played here? About I know obviously you talked to me as your yeah. coach, but since no, I have not. No. Yeah. Are good for job? Thank you guys. Thank you. What was the driving to work like today? Oh, it wasn't bad at all. Yeah, uh, being only 25 minutes away from from home, uh, it was pretty cool. You know, um, just giving and getting that call. So it's been it's been fun so far. Yeah. What's the last week been like for you? Oh man, just the last week was a roller coaster. You know, just watching the drafts. Um, you know, just waiting to hear my name called. Um, yeah, a lot of emotion going through it, but you know, as soon as I got that call, um, man, I just tell you what, tears rolling down my eyes. You know, all that hard work and uh, dedication I put in through the years. You know, being injured um, is finally paying off. So yeah, I was happy. How many phone calls did you receive uh, after you got drafted? I got a lot of text messages. Yeah, not not too many phone calls, but yeah, a lot of text messages. Um, people congratulating me. You know, um, you yeah, know, getting drafted. So. What did you so. think? I guess a little while later, they drafted your teammate. Oh man! What was it like? So it was cool. So they actually called me before. Um, you know, it was like, "Hey, what do you think about um, uh, Izzy Benacanda?" I'm like, "Oh, he's an amazing player." You know, and he was like, "Oh, we're looking to draft him for, uh, real soon, so be on lookout." So once I seen him uh, get drafted and uh, name was on the board, you know, I was I was I was super excited. You know, I uh, shot him a text. You know, I said, "Let's let's get ready to work." So. Do you think that that'll help make things a little bit easier? You know, knowing you got a guy who. Went through college with, and now he's definitely. here with you. No, definitely, 100%. Um, I say even going over the playbook, you know, uh, I got somebody I could, you know, work with. Um, I know how he thinks. He know how I think. You know, um, we could work together. Um, finally figured out. Yes, sir. sir. What was it like just blocking for uh, Izzy yeah. in college? That was amazing, you know. Uh, you know, I know as soon as I open up that lane, he going to hit the hole. And um, so, yeah, it was cool, you know, blocking for him. I didn't get the, I didn't get the block for him, you know, because I got injured um, this past year. Uh, I, I didn't get to uh, be a part of that big game, those big games he had. But, um, yeah, whenever I played with him, uh, it was cool. So. You also have another former teammate who you probably block a lot in practice, yeah. Alexandre. Yes, sir. Yeah, Des, 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 Des Alexander. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a lot of battles um, going into pit. Uh, we came in together. We were in the same class. Uh, yeah, we were battling a lot every day. But uh, that's one of my great teammates, and he's going to do really good here. What was the injury like for you coming back from that? You know, I'm sure you wanted to finish the season yes, on the field. Yes, sir. It was tough. It was tough finding out that you know I had to get surgery, but um, it, it was cool. Um, I, I got on my knees, you know, prayed to God that he he get me through this, and uh, I'm here now. So, were you thinking of coming out uh, after you were there six years, right? Yes, I was there for six were years. You were thinking of coming out after the fifth year? Yeah, I thought about coming out, but um, you know, a lot of people they they thought I'd be a late round uh, draft pick, so uh, I wanted to come back and uh, you know de- develop my game. So. I did that, you know, and yeah, I'm here today. So. Did you speak to the NFL, the that committee that gives you input? Yes, sir. On where yeah. you might go. Yes, sir. Yeah, they said six, seven, the uh, undrafted free agent. So. So what did you hear? You needed to work on to elevate your stock. It was my run game. That's uh, a lot of that was like number one. You know, coming up on the film, uh, me uh, doing a better job finishing blocks, and um, yeah, that's, that's that's number one really. Was there ever a point where you thought if you didn't have surgery, you could come back? You know, or was surgery the way it had to go? Yeah, surgery, just, uh, I could have played on it, you know, um, but surgery, um, you know, for, for later on in my career was the uh, best thing I could do. So, so. What's the number one characteristics of being a great uh, pass blocker? Being a great pass blocker, I say um, number one is great feet. You got to have great feet, um, and um, eyes is number uh, eyes is number two as well. Um, getting your eyes to the target um, as soon as you get off your uh, you know get off your uh, your kick set whatever. Um, you got to have your eyes on uh, your target all times. Now you played a lot of left tackle. What's your experience at other positions in case you need to move around? Definitely, yeah. So I started off at Pitt at left guard, uh, so I got a lot of experience there. I uh, played about a year there at left guard, and also I played a, a little bit of right tackle in practice as well. So. How comfortable you right tackle? Because you might be a swing guy. Definitely, yeah, I'm really comfortable there. I've been working on it a lot um, over in training, uh, when I was training for the combine as well, and uh, still, still currently. So, so. Sure.
you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Busy. What's this been like for you? You know, diving into the playbook and trying to get acclimated here. I feel great. You know, I feel like I'm back at phase one. You know, I feel like I'm back at freshman year of college. You know, just getting ready for a whole, you know, a long season, ready to work with my new teammates and ready to show them, get my respect, and show them that I could impact as well. How do you feel like your time in Pitt has prepared you for this moment? Time and pit, definitely. Uh, the playbook, I definitely say the playbook is the main important thing. Uh, just me learning uh, the playbook during pit kind of helped me learn it here because we kind of use kind of NFL knowledge during pit, so it kind of helped me a lot here. Is it exciting just to get back to football after all the draft training and you know, all that stuff you had to do of worrying about 40 times and that stuff? Now you're here actually playing football? Yet? Yeah, it's definitely exciting to play you know, real football now. Definitely exciting, you know. You already signed your contract, so what are you gonna do with? Uh, do you have any ideas what you might do with the money? Uh, uh, really, I don't really like like to spend a lot for real. People think I spend a lot, but I don't really like to spend a lot. Uh, but you know, just take care of my my close ones. That's the initial part. You know, just take care of my family, my mom, my dad. That's the main thing. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. That necklace doesn't look cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you spend much money right now. Oh, uh, this this college NIL, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is it uh, for your parents and your family? Your parents coming from Nigeria, I believe, and now you're in the NFL, you know, living the American dream. How cool is it for you and your parents? Oh, it's definitely amazing, you know, coming from where, coming from where they came from, you know, it, it's not really none of that. A lot of people, you know, really a lot of suffers back there, so they moved over to the, you know, the states for a better life, and for them to see this happening, they did it for a reason. So it mean a lot to them, and it mean a lot to me. Was it always your goal to be in the NFL? Since I was four years old. And, and you talked about it on on, on the call. Like, you come from a basketball school. What was that like to to not play basketball. You, know, you know, it was it was kind of it was kind of a hard process, you know, because everybody didn't really believe in me. A lot of people doubted, like you know, you can't play football, go to the NFL from Brooklyn, New York. But you know, I felt like I could show them, and also Curtis Samuel leading the way from Brooklyn, New York. I felt like I could be the next one. You also come from a Pitt has a great tradition of running backs. You know, Curtis Martin, Shady McCoy. Connor, what's it like to be part of that? Do you feel that when you're there? Do you know any of those guys? Uh, definitely. I talked to uh, Shady a lot. You know, me and Shady talked a lot, and James Connor as well. You know, they showed a lot of love and support throughout the whole process. And when I was there, it, it really it didn't click click till I left. You know, actually seeing a lot of people say say, "Oh yeah, you did exactly what the other players did." Especially after I broke Tony Dorsett record, you know, it started clicking in. But at the time, my time at Pitt, I just felt like Israel Bonacunda. You know, I just felt like me. Did you come out early because of the position you play? The running backs, you know, you take a lot of hits. Was that part of the thinking, like, I should go now? Uh, actually, what, the reason why I came out early, you know, ever since I was young, I always played against older kids, older players. And I felt like this past year, the game started slowing down in a way. So I felt like for me to be a man on and off the field, I need to better advance myself. So I felt like it was that time. What's it mean or what is it like to go through this now with your former Pitt teammate? Actually, two of them, but, but you know, he Carter's drafted right before you. Oh, yeah, it felt great. You know, it just felt like like I'm back at Pitt with him, you know. The relationship with me, Carter, and uh, Deslin, it just felt like, you know, back at phase one, you know, we already know how this get. So it's just time to work, you know, just do it together this time. Pitt is turning out a lot of pro players in recent years. What does Coach Narduzzi do to prepare guys for the pros? Uh, Narduzzi really make us a man on and off the field. You know, he just he's a he uses a different type of coach a coaching style. You know, he could be hard on you on the field, but then again, you know, he be real with you off the field. You know, you know, tell you the real, tell you what you need to get better on, even uh, life lessons as well. Narduzzi is just a, a real man, a real stand up guy for real. Anything else for us? Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that.